So the next problem that we're going to look at is called the subset sum problem. So the ingredients of the problem are the following. So we have a set, let's call this uh, set S. Um, the set S con contains numbers. So for example, two, four, six, eight, and 10. And then we have another number, uh, let's call it M, for example, 16. And then the question of the following, uh, how many combinations of numbers can we take from the subset such that if we add all these numbers together, we get the number 16. So the question is the following. How many combinations of numbers in S add up to M? Okay, so for example here, 10 plus 6 is 16, so that's 1, but you can also take um, 2 plus 4 is 6, um, let me think, ah, 8 plus 6 is 14, plus 2 is 16, so that's another one, right? So maybe there are more, right? So I already have 2 here, maybe there are more, there are 3, 4, 5, I don't know. The question is how many are there, okay? So we try to get this into a recursive uh, structure. So our problem is going to depend on M and on the subset S. Okay, so let us write this as in a general form. We have a value function which computes the number of combinations in some set S that add up to M. Okay, and we would like to write this into in a certain recursive uh, formulation as hopefully something uh, that depends that may depend on v but for a smaller problem right so for example lower numbers of m or subsets of s okay so let's take i and s so for example it's 2 4 6 8 uh, 10 then if we take a certain subset of s that adds up to m then either i is in the subset or i is not any subset Okay, so if you take a collection uh, add up, so either i is in the subset that adds up to m, or i is not in subset that adds up to m. Okay, so we can consider these two cases uh, separately. So first of all, if i is not in, if you look at a subset that adds up to m and i is not in a subset, okay, how many are there? Well, we know that our m is minus i of those subsets. Okay, because every subset here doesn't, if you take a subset of this set, it doesn't include i and it has to add up to m, so we have so many subsets that satisfy this condition. So if i is in a subset that adds up to m, so how many of these subsets are there? Well, we know that if we take all the elements in the subset and without i, then it has to add up to m minus i. Okay, so here we have is something like this. Okay, and of course the total number of subsets of s that add up to m is the total number of all subsets that add up to m that include i plus the total number of subsets that add up to m and does not include i so we have to take the sum of these two okay so this is the bellman recursion or bellman equation vms is going to be equal to v m minus i s minus i plus v m is minus i. So here you see that this has to be non-negative. So this is if i is less or equal to m, or it's equal to v m s minus i if i is bigger than m. right. If i is bigger than m, you cannot uh, have a subset that adds up to m and includes i. 
Okay, so basically we have to distinguish between two cases. I is smaller than M, then you take all the subsets that doesn't include I and add up to M. Or you take all the subsets that doesn't include I and add up to M minus I. Because then adding I to this to these sets of subsets will get you to M. Okay, so this is my Bellman equation. Now I have to look at the base cases. So what are the base cases? Uh, first, at some point we we go into smaller and smaller subsets. All right, so we have to look at Vm empty set. How many subsets are there of, of the empty set that add up to M? Well, there are none of them. Okay, and you also have to we have something decreasing in M. So we have to look at the base cases where M is zero. How many subsets of S add up to zero? Well, there are ex exactly one subset of S that adds up as total zero, which is the empty set, right? So these are the two base cases. And then there's a particular case where V is a zero of the empty set, and this is also equal to one. Okay, so this is only for M bigger than one. Okay, so this is a, a particular case. So these are the base cases, and then we have this uh, recursion going on. So let's have a look how this looks like for this uh, particular example. So what we do is we make a table, and so each time we're going to add one element up to S, right? So here we're going to look at this, the empty subset, then we're going to take the first element which is 2, then we're going to add 4, then we're going to add 6, 4, 2, then we're going to add 8, and then we're going to take the entire subsets, 10, 8, 6, 4, 2, right? So these are going to be my columns of my table. And then the rows we're going to put M. So first of all, one thing that you can already see is that all these numbers are even. So M can never be odd, okay? So I'm only going to look at the even values. So this is going to cut my table in half. Um, so this is for simplicity. Normally you also have to add all the, the odd numbers in between, but I'm only going to focus on the even ones here uh, for simplicity. So this is 60. Okay, and in the table we're going to try to put in the values of V and S. Okay, and S are these sets, and M are these sets. Okay, we know that for the base cases, M, M is equal to zero. There is always one subset of all these sets uh, that add up to one. So now, for example, here, we also know that for the empty set, all the values here are equal to zero. Okay, so this is zero, zero, zero. So you can already uh, fill in all these values. So if S is equal to two and M is equal to two, so then we have to look at this recursion here. Okay, Vm minus I, so this is two minus two for the set S minus I. So here the set S minus the two, which is the empty set. Okay, so we just have to go to the left so here, this will be going to the left and going up, right, and 2 up, which is 1, plus Vm, S minus I, and this is just the, the, the 1 to the left, right? So you basically add up this to this one, which will give you 1, okay? For here, for 4, you go to the left and 4 up, but 4 up doesn't exist, so here we also have 1. Go to the left and add up 6 above, which will also give 1, here also 1, and here also 1. Okay, because you cannot go, uh, there should be a 10 here at the top. You cannot go 10 up. Here for this value, you take the 0, and you go 2 up, which is 0. So this becomes a 0. For this one, you go to the left, you have the 0, and you have 4 up, which is 1. You add the two together and you get one. One and then six above, which is doesn't exist, so this stays at one. 
here also stays at 1 and here also stays at 1. So there's one subset of this one that adds up to 4, which is simply the number 4. Okay? So here, 0 plus 0, which is 0. Of course, there's no subset of this set that adds up to, to 6, right? So basically, these are all 0 by definition because 2 can never add up to any uh, number here. Here, this plus this is 1, okay, 4 plus 2 is equal to 6, so that's good. Here I have 1 plus 6 above, which is 0, 1 plus 1, which is 2. There are two subsets of this set that adds up to 6. Here we have 2, 8 above, 0, so here we have 2, and here we also have 2. Here, for the 8, we go to the left and 4 up, which is 0. So there are no subsets of this here that add up to 8, and then all these will also be 0. Right, you can already fill in this table as such. Here we have 0, and then we add 1 here. Here we have 1 plus 8 above, which is 1, so we have 2. 2 plus 10 above, which is 0, so this becomes 2. Here we have 10 plus 4, which is equal to 1. Here we go to the left, which is 1, and then up to 2. So here we have 2. Here we have 2 plus 10 above, which is 1. So here we have 3. There are 3 subsets of the set that adds up to 10. Okay, for the number 12, to the left, 6 above, we have a 1 here. To the left, plus 8 above, so we have to go to 4, so here we have 2, here we have 2 plus 10 above, which is 1, so we have 2 here. For 14, to the left, so this becomes a 0, this will also be 0. Here we go to the left, which is 0 plus, you have to go 8 above to 6, which is 2, and here to the left, um, which is 2, and then to 4, which is 1, so this is 3, and we have two numbers to finish. If we go to the left, we have 0, and then 16 minus 8 is 8, we have 1 here, and then here to the left we have 1, and 10 above we have 6, so this is 2 here, so here we have 3. So in general there are three subsets of this set here that adds up to 16. Okay, so this is how you make the table, and this is how you solve the problem. So let's have a quick look at how difficult it is uh, to compute uh, this number here. So basically what we have to do is, we have to compute for every value of m, right, and every, basically, how many uh, rows do we have? We have the cardinality of the set. Okay, and then how many rows do we have, uh, how many columns do we have, we have the cardinality of set, how many rows do we have, we have uh, m rows, total number that we want to add up to. Here I only have m over 2, but that's just because the numbers are even. If some of these numbers are odd, you will have to fill in every row. Okay, so for every row we simply have to add up at most two numbers together, so this is a constant uh, cost, so this is of the order m. Uh, s. Here m is the number to which we have to add up and s is the number of elements in uh, the set of elements from which you can uh, choose. Okay, let's see how this looks like if you want to program it. Okay, so here we are back at Julia. So the only thing I did was so far define a vector of numbers, right? This is my set s, you can say. So it contains the number 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And I'm going to write a function, sub, subset sum, that's going to take as a vector of numbers, this one above, right, and then a total number m, and it's going to compute the number of subsets that add up to m from the set of numbers. Okay, so first of all, let the n be the length of numbers, so we know 
know how many numbers we have in total. And I'm going to store, as usual, uh, the solution in a dictionary that for every... Uh, so now I'm going to have to take a subset of numbers. So for example, 2, 4, 6, right? The first 3 or the first 4 or the first 5 and a value m and compute the number of subsets right so the state here is both a number and then the cardinality of the subset of numbers that I'm, I'm i'm looking at so it's going to be two integers so i'm going to store it in a a tuple right so two values of numbers and then the key is going to be an integer this is going to store the number of subsets that add up to this uh, particular number Okay, so this is how it's going to look like, and in the end I'm going to return v. Okay, so if I call subset sum on numbers, and uh, I think my number was n was 16, at the moment I'm just going to return a dictionary, right, which is empty. So first of all, let me store the base cases. Okay, so for index equal 1 to n. So index is going to look at, so if index is equal to 1, I'm going to look at the subset 2 of numbers, right? If index is equal to 2, I'm going to look at 2 and 4. If index is equal to 3, I'm going to two, look at 2, 4, 6, and so on. Okay. So uh, the first case, right, I had that v of m empty set, right, was equal to 1 for all m, okay? So for i equal to 1 to m, I'm going to put v of the tuple i and then the empty set, so it takes zero elements, right? So I'm going to put it equal to 1, okay? So this is my first base case. And then the second base case says that v of 0 for any index that's then bigger than uh, the empty set, right? It's going to be equal to zero. So for index i equal to one, so this is the, the, the size of the subset that I'm looking at, I'm gonna have that zero uh, index is e going to be equal to zero. Okay, so this is going to set my base cases and here you can see I have some seven zero is equal to one, there are um, so I was mistaken. This has to be zero, right? For any uh, i equal to one, and then for any um, this has to be equal one, right? There's one way to get to the empty subset uh, to generate the sum of zero. Okay. So there are zero ways to generate from the empty subset the number zero. There is one way to generate from the two element subset uh, uh, the number zero. Okay, so, so sorry, I switched here the, the, the base cases. Okay, and now for i equal to one to m, right? I'm gonna have to loop over this m here. Okay, and then for index equal to one, to n. Okay, so this is the size of the subset that I'm considering. Let me write down the Bellman equation. I had v of i of index was equal to v index minus the numbers at index. Index minus 1 plus, let me shift it a little bit to the right, I'm just looking at the Bellman equation here. V index index minus one. Okay, so here index measures the size of the, the subset S and I is the amount that I want to, it to add up to. All right, so how many subsets of this index size set add up to I? Well, I have the ones that include the last elements in a subset. 
So for the number of subsets here are i minus the number at the last number that I add to the set, right? Plus the number of subsets of this subset minus the last element. And then if it doesn't, if the subs all the subsets that don't include this last element, there are vi of index minus one uh, of them. Okay, and this is for the case if uh, numbers of index is this or equal to n. Okay, and if numbers index it's not m but here it's i right i use counter i if numbers index is bigger than i well it's simply v i index is equal to v i index minus one okay so let's now write this out in code so if numbers at the value index is bigger than i i'm going to define v of i index equal to v at i index minus one else i'm going to define v and now i'm looking at the bottom here i index to be equal to v i minus the last added number which is this one and then the subset set that doesn't contain the last number plus v i index minus one so let me compute this here i'm going to end this and this so this is this loop and I'm going to have a last end here okay and I think this should give me a solution to the subset sum so let me store this in the vector v let's see if I have any errors probably yes key zero zero not found um, yes I haven't defined the key zero zero right so because here the index should go from 0 to n. Okay. So let's see uh, how many subsets of the five element subsets, right? So here there are in total 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this considers the entire set. Add up to 16. We have three of them, which was exactly what we got from the table. Okay. So you can increase here, for example, to 20. How many subsets add up to 20? I don't know, also three of them. And you can, for example, add numbers here, right? So if we add the number one, you can, for example, look how many add up to 19. Oh, there's only one combination. Now I should go to six, probably. There are three combinations of this set of six elements that add up to 19. Okay, so you can generalize it by adding numbers or by increasing or decreasing the value you would uh, like it to add up to. Okay, so this was a subset sum problem. Uh, thank you for watching.